Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is my colleague, Maria Aleman. Maria has more than 20 years of experience working in the IT sector and more than 10 years of experience as an agilist, helping teams and companies like Telefonica R&D, Alliance Technology, Caissa Bank, WeFox, to evolve their cultures in ways of working, thinking, and collaborating, and to become more resilient, innovative, human-centric, so that they can adopt and respond to change to change faster. Her motto is, try it, because life is too short to be frightened. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Maria. Thank you, Ed. Nice to meet you. Well, first off, Maria, why do you do what you do? Well, I am a coach. I think this is my passion. The reason is because at some point in my life, I I realized that I had a great power inside myself and that I really could do everything to change uh, my life. I think this was the moment in which I created my uh, my motto, uh, try it because life is too short to be frightened. And I think that coaching was the key thing that helped me in that moment. Uh, and somehow I, I want to give back. Uh, and I, I do what I do because my passion is to help people to, to really to create this awareness, people and teams and, and companies to create this awareness about the power that they have uh, inside themselves uh, to really do great things together. Well, and talk to me a little bit how, of how you think that coaching is more about creating spaces for conversation. I really like that. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, as a coach, uh, you can coach individuals uh, for to help these individuals to grow, but also this can be extrapolated to teams and organizations. Uh, so when you are coaching a team, coaching a team is about creating this space for conversations. Uh, um, it is very important that the team members can talk together and in a safe space that everybody can have uh, the opportunity to talk, to be listened. Um, and also a coach uh, a coach is not going to give solutions to the team is going to ask questions to create this awareness on the of the team on, on the team what can you do to solve this what could you like to improve what is your main pain here what is the next thing that you can do better this kind of thing uh, and the team can work together to find their own solutions so Having this safe space uh, for conversations is really important, and I think I would say that this is the main thing that a coach uh, can do for a team. No, is creating this uh, safe space for conversations, and also instead of giving uh, solutions, asking really great questions. Yes, I think a, a Peter Drucker said that you should replace advice with curiosity. Exactly. <laughs> So what, what are some of the ways that you, you uh, some of the questions that perhaps you use to try to draw, draw this out of folks? Is there so, something that's been helpful for you, some series of questions, or just even a, a concept around question act, asking that's been helpful for you? Yeah, well, when I am doing, for example, a conversation with the team, it depends. No, uh, we are also facilitators. Uh, so as facilitators, I used to prepare a bit the structure of the conversations. Uh, let's say the process that the team is going to follow uh, to get a an outcome. But I consider always that I am not the owner of the agenda or the owner of the conversation. I, as a coach, I fo the, the team, I let the team focus in their problem while I focus in the team, in helping the team to grow, to find the outcome that they need to find. So, and this means that I need to adapt all the time uh, during these kind of conversations in order to serve the team the better possible. But uh, the questions I used to make to the team is, of course, uh, I try to understand, I, I try to ask them questions uh, to help them to reflect about, for example, why the problem that they are trying to solve is important for them. If they solve them this problem, what is going to be different for them, for example? how the future is going to look like, uh, to look like no what are the options what are the strengths that they that they have that can help them uh, to move from, from situation a to situation uh, b for example uh, what are the skills the skills that they need to grow in order to be able to do the change for example 
And I also uh, try to, to ask them, uh, in order to have like some actionable items, not to really put something in practice, uh, for example, uh, what is a small little change that you can do starting from tomorrow? So, because sometimes it is a lot of small changes. Uh, when, you, when a year has passed, you have like a, a great, <laughs> a great change, no? So I think these kind, these kind of things. And tie that into the together with with the, our, the program that we have here at Sage on continuous innovation. Yeah, well, I joined continuous innovation because uh, our mission and vision is about empowering the people. So it's about creating the conditions uh, for the people to innovate, and this is what we do. Really, we create this safe, this safe space for conversations in the team in order to help them to reach a certain uh, outcome. And also we train the people, we mentor the people, we provide tools to, that the people can use to do the thing uh, by themselves. We are not giving solutions to the people. We don't do the work uh, by themselves. Uh, what we do is to create uh, the space for the conversations and also we give them the knowledge, the tools, the support they need to do the thing, to innovate by themselves. So this is what I love because it is about giving the people the power. It is empowering the people. And Maria, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Well, to be honest, I have a lot of heroes. And for me, usually I think, uh, he, well, the heroes are like normal people. Lately, I have some colleagues that are my heroes. For example, I can mention some of them. Can I mention my colleagues here? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, for example, Carl Lovett, because he is a great leader. He, he, he was like super bold trying to to use a new approach in, in a project, for example, uh, empathizing with the people, creating this space for the conversations. Um, uh, really, um, uh, because when you are trying to do something different, it is difficult. You find a lot of impediments um, uh, that comes from the organization for the way, the normal way of doing the things. Um, but she, he was really, he, he told something that uh, for me resonated a lot that was, for example, okay, we are creating a bit of friction and this is normal because we are change, changing the things. So, yeah, if, this is because we are changing the things, no? If, uh, if we don't create friction, we wouldn't be changing nothing. So this is a normal thing and I can manage this. So I, I, I find this is my hero. Uh, another person that is also my hero, for example, Badel Wayne, male, that is another person in my team, because they are always uh, challenging them, themselves, no? asking themselves questions. No? Can I do something better? Why am I doing what I am doing? Because I have been doing the same always, or should I do something different? So I think these are my, my little heroes, no? the ones that inspire me really to continue every day. And lastly, Maria, how can somebody contact you? Well, uh, of course, you can contact me by email. My email is uh, maria.aleman arroba sage, uh, well, at, sorry, <laughs> arroba is in Spanish, at sage.com. <laughs> Excellent. Maria Aleman, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.